Hey everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Holiday Healthy Eating webinar. My name is Kate Watts. I'm a dietitian here with Kern Health. So I'm going to go over what to expect today. If you'd like to ask questions about the presentation, just use the chat box. And also, if you'd like a copy of these slides, you are welcome to send me an email and I will send those your way. So today, what to expect, we're going to talk a little bit about the season coming up and how we have some cultural norms around overeating and overindulging this time of year. So we want to look at just some basic tips for those holiday events and social gatherings that are coming up, kind of how to navigate everything, be able to enjoy ourselves without going overboard. Um, we're going to also compare some different holiday meals, um, as well as go over some food safety tips, and I have some recipe resources for you at the very end. So these are just a couple things we're going to touch on today to help us stay healthy during the holidays. The average American is going to consume around 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving. So that is more than double the amount of calories that most people need. It's even up to triple the amount that some people need in any given day. So many factors contribute to our habit of overeating throughout the holiday season. And while it's totally understandable to want to splurge on a few items during the holidays, we sometimes allow these splurges to slip over into the days and even weeks following a holiday meal. So it can be helpful just to take time before we enter into this busy season to explore your own mindset and to choose to focus on moderation, which can ensure that we, again, enjoy ourselves without feeling guilty afterwards. So mindset is really it's just a set of attitudes that impacts how you think and what you feel and what you ultimately do. Um, so it's good to take just a little time to reflect on what are these attitudes that the holidays evoke in you. So there's probably some excitement towards different events and gatherings and just the time of the year and the holiday cheer. There might also be some stress involved with, you know, having the right uh, food set up, having the right gifts purchased and different things like that. Maybe some um, nervousness that comes with the season as well and then explore what is your own reason for the season so what is the you know bottom line reason that we gather around these ample food occasions during this time of year and so whereas we sometimes get swept up in all the hustle and bustle of the season just choose to be more mindful and in control where you can so a few other things as far as mindset going into this season, you know, it's not always the best time to focus on weight loss. And so we really encourage just trying to maintain your current weight as a good goal throughout the holiday season. And really, really importantly is to plan on not dieting after the new year. So this anticipation of food restriction from a strict diet um, sets you up for overeating during the holidays. We kind of get in that mentality of what I like to call the last supper <laughs> mentality, which is, okay, if I can't eat this in a month, I might as well go ahead and enjoy as much as I can now. And so not to mention that these restrictive diets don't work in the long run. They increase our lean body mass, our muscle mass. Um, so we're not losing the body fat that we're after. It slows your metabolism. These strict diets increase anxiety and depression and food preoccupation and binge eating. So this all leads to weight regain down the road. So just to encourage everyone to focus on habits, not weight. So not, not just during this season, but even as we get to setting new year goals. And really focusing more just on feeling good and making good decisions that we're happy with and balancing everything um, in a moderate way. Another great way to um, help encourage a positive mindset and build up our willpower 
during the holidays is to continue to stay active. So our physical activity like walking, biking, hiking, ice skating, skiing, sledding, these can all help relieve stress and help regulate our appetite throughout the day as well as burn up a few extra calories for us. So, you know, get out there as a family, a family walk after a large meal, um, playing out in the snow during um, those times of year. And if you are already regularly active, try to stay in your routine as best you can and not let that fall from the calendar when shopping or cooking um, is added on to the schedule. So next, we're just going to go through some tips for holiday events, all the social gatherings, family events, uh, work events, and gatherings. So we're going to go through a few practical things that you can try out on the day of these events and at these um, social gatherings. So the first one and probably the most important one is not to go hungry. If you arrive to a party and you're starving, you are guaranteed to overeat. So, you know, if you're out running around shopping, doing errands before an event, um, and we accidentally skipped lunch or we didn't pack a healthy snack, we are pretty much setting ourselves up to overindulge at these parties. So really try not to skip meals if you can, and especially not in an effort to save up calories. We think that if, okay, I know I'm going to be eating a lot tonight. I can't wait to go and enjoy this meal. I'll just skip breakfast so that I can save those calories for later. And really this backfires. Um, we want to try to stay on a regular eating schedule, managing our appetite, and going into an event with a manageable level of hunger instead of this ravenous famished um, feeling when we get to an event. And to kind of go along with that is to plan ahead what splurges we're looking forward to. So thinking about which foods at certain events are really special to you. What are those ones that you look forward to all year and you just absolutely cannot wait to have and enjoy and indulge in during the holiday season versus the food that, you know, you have all the time throughout the year, you probably could do without. For me, that's like a basic, you know, dinner roll or maybe some, some rice or something that's, that's in the spread. Um, but I'm going to really go in for those things that I look forward to throughout the year that are really special. And that's what we want to splurge on. So this works well in combination with arriving to an event with a manageable level of hunger. Because if we get to an event and we haven't eaten all day, we're likely going to be splurging on everything and not just a couple key items that we are really excited about. So especially with desserts, try to be cheesy about your sweets and desserts and really savor them, savor each bite. It's easy if we are, you know, say making a gingerbread house and we're mindlessly popping candy throughout that time. We're not truly enjoying all of those bites. Some of them, yeah, we're maybe paying attention, but to a point it's just there and it's just uh, mindless. So especially with your sweet, if you take that first bite and it's not everything you thought it was going to be, then don't feel like you have to finish it because it's on your plate or it's in front of you. Save those calories for something else that you really are enjoying eating every bite. Another great tip for gatherings, especially when there's a lot of types of foods available, like a potluck um, or many appetizers and dessert type dishes like at a work function, think small. So, Try serving your food on a smaller plate rather than a larger one. And what this is going to do is naturally you serve yourself a smaller portion to fill up that plate. And research shows that we actually end up eating about 30% less just by using smaller plates, bowls, and glasses. Um, so this works as well for things like caloric drinks and alcoholic beverages, having smaller glasses. Um, to limit or at least um, be more aware of your intake throughout um, a social event. So with those, again, big spreads of foods and a large variety, you can either choose your splurges and then try to balance with healthier items that are available, maybe fruit or veggie platters. Um, or if you like to kind of sample everything, 
try serving yourself taste in bites rather than full portions. And then if there's something that really struck a note with your taste buds, you can go back for a little more, but um, you kind of determine that ahead of time versus having larger portions of everything that is offered. Another really important tip for gatherings is um, being very mindful of what you're drinking. So when we're drinking calories, we aren't necessarily filling up our stomach very much, so it's easy to overdo it. And so sipping smart, choosing your beverages wisely, especially if you choose to consume alcohol, is a great tip to help with your um, reducing overindulging during the holidays. Alcohol, especially, is high in calories, but not only that, it lowers our inhibitions, right? So we become more likely to overindulge in food after an evening of heavy drinking, or you know, we start to revisit that food table more and more throughout uh, an event if we're having alcohol at the same time. So if you are drinking alcohol, try to select light wines and light beers and alternate those with plain or sparkling water between drinks as well as being mindful of the types of mixers that you choose, um, trying to do low sugar, uh, low calorie options there. Also be aware of the extra calories in soda. Eggnog, hold on, give a little feedback. Let me see if I can someone here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, having water in between caloric drinks is a great way to balance out um, the calories that we're getting from our drink options. Enjoying the company at events is another kind of mindset trick that going into an event, you can kind of set yourself up for, yeah, sure, I'm looking forward to the food that's going to be there, but I want to focus my attention on the people and conversations and prioritize those over the food alone. So if you are um, stationed next to the buffet table, you're bound to find yourself mindlessly munching throughout the night um, on the items that are near you. So fill up your plate, then distance yourself from the food table, go mingle, go socialize. And in addition to this too, at events, I really try to encourage people to Avoid making conversations about your food choices or about others' food choices. Uh, honestly, to me, nothing really dampens a party more than someone talking about why they are avoiding this food or that food. And as a dietitian, I, I get this a lot. We, I have people come up with diet talk, right, and wanting to get my opinion or get me on board with the latest diet they're trying. So don't let diet talk ruin a party. Don't let it make you feel guilty about your choices either. Just remember that no matter how prideful someone is about their food restrictions now, that fad diet is not going to last forever. So um, try to uh, distance yourself from conversations that start to bash the food that is there or uh, encourage the overindulgement. Just kind of stay in your lane. Do what feels right for you but don't feel like you have to be the food police and push those opinions on others either. Now, if you're hosting an event, uh, you've got a little bit more control here. And so a few tips for the host, um, try to include some healthy options like veggie or fruit platters amongst appetizers to balance out what's guaranteed to have some cheesy, buttery um, uh, items there as well. So balance is key and trying to um, be open to healthy recipe alternatives, offering a balanced meal. So some lean protein, some healthy carbs, maybe some whole grains or sweet potatoes, something like that, and some vegetables, add some color and variety. If you definitely fall prey to leftovers <laughs> and overindulging in leftovers for days after an event, um, try sending them home with guests or taking them over and sharing with neighbors after your event, especially desserts, which is a great thing that is very food safe as far as transporting home and things like that. Um, but at the same time, this is a careful balance. You don't want to be a food pusher either. 
if, if you're not wanting that food in your house to tempt you um, and a guest does not want that food in their house to then tempt them, then respect that, of course. But many people will be more than happy to take some of that extra food off your hands and take it home to share with their families um, and friends. Another thing is to think about your beverage options. So I always recommend setting out a water pitcher or infusing some water with spiced fruit or berries for a kind of festive touch. Um, just so people know that it's an option and that it's a convenient option uh, in addition to any other, you know, sodas or um, sugary drinks that we may um, be offering at an event. Additionally, with potluck gathering, so if everyone's bringing a dish, um, don't be afraid to, to bring a dish that will offer that lighter, healthier balance to the wide array of comfort foods that are sure to be there. And I guarantee you that others will appreciate just having that option to balance out their choices as well. A few things to touch on as far as recipes and what we're making during the holidays. Um, we, you know, we all have family favorite dishes that are expected to be on the table unaltered. If you know what I mean, and we normally all have a certain family member that looks forward to a certain dish or a certain family member that makes a traditional dish really well, and we don't want to change that. So choose one or two of those really important family favorites, but then be willing to get a little flexible and try out um, you know, different side dishes and things that we could maybe give a healthy facelift. And small changes can really save you big time on calories without sacrificing the great taste of the food. So I've got a little example here. My favorite one is sweet potatoes because they are so naturally sweet and delicious. And yet around the holidays, we love to really load them up, butter them up with all of this extra sugar and fat, which don't get me wrong, is delicious. But um, if it's not that family go-to favorite, there's a lot you can do with sweet potatoes to make them delicious without adding all those extra calories. And so we've kind of got a progression from left to right here of the sugary caloric option down to a more wholesome, natural, but still delicious and sweet option for our sweet potatoes. So roasting, grilling, and sauteing vegetables, instead of cooking them into the creamy, buttery, cheesy concoctions and casseroles, um, also baking, broiling, and grilling versus frying foods, especially our meat and our side dishes. And if you're comfortable with it, there's also lots of ways to swap out ingredients um, that will save you a little bit of calories and fat and really you don't tell a difference in the recipe. And there's lots of different recommendations for that online. Um, but those can be as simple as oil instead of butter. Um, it can be as simple as plain Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. The list goes on and on. If, if you want to play around with a ingredient swap, that's an easy, tricky way to um, <laughs> switch out some calories as well. So the, the other main consideration when you're cooking a dish is to watch the salt or sodium amount. And we have such a huge variety of herbs and spices that we can tap into for flavor using fresh lemon juice or onion, garlic, salt-free spice blends. Um, so this is this was a big change that my family made after my dad had his heart attack years ago. And we just kind of all agreed that we were going to put a little effort in looking at our different recipes and making this a priority so that it could be healthy for everyone. And it's really, you know, just having that conversation with your family sometimes can start off such a, a great change in your family gatherings um, just to kind of agree like, hey, yeah, this is important to all of us. Let's just put a little effort into tweaking it here and there each year. Um, so that is another big one, the sugar, the salt, and the fat, of course. So we're going to look at a little bit of uh, example, some example meals here and compare and contrast them. So I've got two delicious looking holiday plates here, and you can clearly see there's a big difference in these plates. So just take a minute to consider these two holiday meals, what differences you see, how you might feel after finishing each meal, would you be Stuff? Would you be satisfied? 
would you be ready for a nap? <laughs> um, so some pretty obvious differences in portion size and the amount of fat and calories present in the types of food and, and um, just contrast on the plate here. So the most obvious way to grade your plate, and we're looking at the more indulgent plate, holiday plate here, um, the most obvious way to grade your plate is just to look for evidence of color. If all items on the plate are similar in color, usually that's like a beige or a tan, then we know there are some important food groups missing, namely our vegetables. So here we've got a larger portion out on the plate, um, a good amount of bread and carbs present. We've loaded up the one vegetable dish with a significant amount of some fat and food um, and calories there. So in contrast, we have our more moderate holiday plate. And so you'll notice again, color, right? Color also provides interest and excitement for your eyes. So believe it or not, you are already more satisfied with your food before you even start eating if you have contrast in color. So you'll notice on these, this plate, we have not only more color, but more wholesome foods, uh, more one ingredient type dishes that have been been enhanced with herbs and spices. We still have some of the holiday favorite stuffing and gravy, just in gravy in more moderate portions. Um, so, you know, your actual plate will likely end up looking like something in between these two plates. And that is totally okay. At the end of the day, it really is just one meal. So um, the best advice as far as a plate method is to try to include some lean protein and vegetables piled on at least half the plate. Um, and also recognizing that you don't have to eat all of the dishes offered simply because they are on the table. Again, you can plan your splurges, which of the creamy, cheesy, buttery casserole dishes do you want to enjoy, and then try to balance that with the healthier options available at the event. So let's talk about leftovers. Each year, 400,000 Americans get sick from holiday leftovers that have been mishandled, left out too long, or stored incorrectly. So since, I mean, my family's always been big on leftovers, but food safety really is an issue here, especially if you're talking about then taking leftovers home from a relative's house. So here's just a few food safety tips for a safe holiday. Making sure if you're the one cooking, that you're cooking your meat completely done. Using a meat thermometer is the most safe way to do this. So investing a few dollars in a good meat thermometer is the way to go. For turkey, that internal temperature is 165 degrees, um, but other meats vary. So you can find this information online or on the um, food safety website listed here. Also with leftovers, um, they can be stored in the refrigerator for up to three to four days. And if you know you're not going to go through all of them <laughs> in that amount of time, you can freeze leftovers. And that way you can keep them a lot longer, pull them back out in a few weeks when the family's actually wanting, desiring that food again, and you can still enjoy it without having a lot of waste. Um, another really important note for events and family gatherings are that leaving food out too long. Um, is an easy way to make it unsafe. So trying to put food away within an hour of the meal if it's perishable. So of course things like, you know, cookies and dried goods and non-perishable items can stay out. But discarding any perishable food that has been left out over two hours is the recommendation to help your family keep from getting sick. So here's just some recipe resources that I have found helpful online. So I have a few things linked for you here. Um, and it, again, if you would like a copy of these slides so that you can access these resources, feel free to send me an email at kate.watts at cleanhealth.com and I'll be happy to send these your way. So we do have a few minutes left. If anyone does have any questions, you're welcome to type that in the chat box and I will take a few questions before we wrap up.
not seeing any immediate questions. So thank you all for joining me today. Happy holidays. Um, I look forward to seeing you in our next webinar.